<laughs> okay. <clears throat> Ready for our uh, speakers here. Um, let me introduce uh, uh, Scott first. Scott Scherer is the co-founder and executive vice president of a nonprofit organization called Hall of Fame Sports Association. Scott currently coaches football at San Ramon Valley High School and has recently coached at Monta Vista High School in Alamo and Stellar Prep in Oakland. He also coached youth football for 14 years and held the executive board position for the San Ramon Valley T-Birds Youth Football and Cheers Program. Scott is on the board of directors for the nonprofit KT Prep Youth Program. He owns a, an employee benefits company, Hall of Fame Benefits, he is, the vice, he, he is the vice president of sports and entertainment for Jim Worth Financial and held the same role with Cole Capital. Scott also is regional vice president with Preferred Capital Securities, responsible for the wholesale uh, distribution of uh, uh, New York Stock Exchange preferred stocks. Scott grew up in San Diego and attended the University of Arizona. He and his wife, Teresa, have six children and live in Danville. Six, huh? <laughs> Is that correct? That's well, I'm on the second hand, yeah. <laughs> and then I'm going to also introduce uh, his co-founder of uh, Hall of Fame Sports Association, Jeff Robner. Served on numerous youth sports uh, boards of directors in East Bay for 20 years, including Tuscarora Valley Little League, San Ramon Valley High School Wolf Foundation, and the Saramon Valley Thunderbirds football and cheer program. 13 years there and eight years as president there. He also lives in Danville with his wife and he only has three kids. <laughs> <laughs> Senior project director of Stephen Gold Corporation, a world packaging design and manufacturing consultancy is where it's from. Welcome, Scott and Jeff. Thank you all very much. I think we all agree kids of all ages everywhere need increased opportunities for physical, social interaction and activity. Anybody agree? Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. It's phenomenal to stand here and listen to these, uh, had, had the opportunity to listen to these young ladies here uh, at Granada High School. And to hear this gentleman talk about we have to start with the youth. Right? You can't, you can't impact your community until you start it at the youngest of ages. We at Hall of Fame Sports Association, Jeff and myself, that's what we're all about. Hall of Fame Sports Association or Hall of Fame Flag Football. We were created and founded with the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Anybody here like football? All right, I know we've got a football coach here, so that's good news. I want to tell you that we currently are at Livermore High School, not Granada. <laughs> Anybody here have a favorite football team? What do you got? Raiders. Raiders. Steelers. Steelers, okay. Wow. And we we are next year. We don't get all good, but we like it. What was it? Bills. The Bills, all right. So we're covering across the country, so you... Uh, Steelers fan, good to know that Jeff and I were at an event the other day with uh, Franco Harris. What? So uh, you uh, Raider fan may not be so excited about that. No. <laughs> what, what we're mission to do, I'm going to talk a couple things. One is about our mission, what we do, what we're here for in Livermore, what our ask is of you, and Jeff will go over uh, some of the community involvement activities that we've had with local businesses such as Grocery Outlet and, and extend more stories than that. Uh, to really impact the community and opportunities for you all as business leaders as well. Uh, so what we do is we want to provide that opportunity for young people to get involved athletically, just pure physically, move, right, and socially. Get away from the games, get away from the computers, meet more people, and, and be more active. What we found is, whether it's this tri-valley of, of craziness of we're all going to be going to USC but on football scholarships, <laughs> that doesn't happen, is people tend to stop playing sports at a certain age because that competitiveness drives them out of the game. Those opportunities, whether they're 10 years old, 11 years old, or 14 years old, there comes a point in time 
where there's a, there's a crazy fanatic that makes a young person feel bad about themselves and doesn't give them the opportunity to continue to play. Has anybody experienced this or yeah. seen this happen? Absolutely. So I'm going to ask you a quick question. What do you all think the absolute number one reason that young people quit playing sports is? In somebody. Injuries? Nice effort. Hormones. Hormones. <laughs> that, 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 that is always a part of it. That creates injuries. Mental injuries, too. Lack of encouragement. Lack of encouragement. So you're kind of on the right path. The number one reason when polled, um, kids say, and again, we're partnered with the Pro Football Hall of Fame, so we've got a lot of resources here, right? When we talk about it, we go out and get these research studies, is parenting. And it's the pressure from the parent. It's the craziness, the expectation set by the parent. It's the drilling down and asking that kid what they're at, you know, why did they do this, what happened here. The car ride home. The worst thing, right? Come in, how come you got the ball? How come you didn't have more action? Oh, no. why, did, why didn't you strike that kid out? How come you didn't listen to them? Okay. The kid fears that drive home and thus doesn't want to go back to practice and then ultimately wants to stop. And then the number two reason that people Stop playing is because of the sure. and poor coaching, which can be a part of that parent now driving that kid away. And so who are they going to have to blame? The coach. All right, because we don't have a great community involvement or communication across the board. So what are we here for? Hall of Fame Sports Association is here to provide those opportunities for kids to play. And we're using the platform of flag football to do it. We are domiciled right here in Livermore. Our office is right here on Anime Airway. We've had the ability to partner with a variety of the schools and organizations locally. We have kids and siblings, participants from Triple Threat Dance Studio right here off of Isabel that play in flag football. We have people from all the schools, from the scouts, from the Fusions soccer program. This is not a sport that we put in place to say don't play anything else, you have to play this. This is a complimentary activity to get people involved with the game and have a lot of fun. Okay. Go out, do some action, and have a lot of fun. This is a? This is a? Yeah, okay, so almost a quarter of you all know what this is. <laughs> so, so you have a sense of what I'm talking about. <laughs> That's pretty good. This is not going to hurt anyone. There are no fears, should be no fears of injury for what we're doing. We've removed the barriers to entry from a cost standpoint because uh, Jeff will go over this, but about 22% of the kids that play in Livermore, and we have 200 kids that play in Livermore each and every season, uh, are on scholarship. So about a quarter of the kids are on scholarship because we want to remove cost as a barrier to entry. We want to remove skills as a barrier to entry. We have the highest level of skills and we have the first time sport player participating all in the field together and they have a great event. We want, uh, Two programs here in Livermore, at Livermore High School. We were at Granada High School last, uh, last spring. We run a winter program, which will start in January, February, and we run a summer program, which is going on right now. So we'd encourage you to come out on Friday nights. We're at Livermore High School, uh, basically from 5 to about 8.30 at night. you see 200 kids and their families out there running around having a great time and uh, competing. We have a lot of really interesting twists with our program, which I, I won't get into details, but I'd love to talk to you all more. Um, if you have kids or grandkids or neighbors or somebody that wants to get involved because nationally we are taking this program to another level. We're in New Jersey. We're in Southern California. We're, we're in a lot of places across the country because of some of the ideas that we've in, um, implemented in here. The other big piece about what we do is characters and values. Anybody think that that's important in our young people? Yes. You talked about your favorite course was what? Ethics. Ethics. Character, value, ethic. That's what it's about. So we're very fortunate because on our advisory board that helped us out here are some uh, football players that maybe you've heard of. One is uh, Warren Moon. He's a Hall of Famer. Another Hall of Famer, Jerry Rice. Anyone ever heard of him? Yeah. Another one, Ronnie Lott. Yeah. Uh, Anthony Munoz. Yeah. He's one of the greatest offensive linemen ever in the history of the game and very supportive of the Hispanic community as well that we're partnered with, uh, with the NFL. What we've done with them is created a character and value content to not just talk about the sport, but talk about you as a person and how you can help your community and go forward. And that's a really important part. And everybody can do that. And uh, Jeff and I will, will go over this briefly, but um, I have to still stutter entirely, but we, we have an award that's called an MVP, and I'll just ask you all, what do you think MVP stands for? Most 
Most valuable most person. Player. Most valuable person. He nailed it right here. Not most valuable player. And I'll give you a quick example. Uh, we had an award this past Friday night, uh, and we asked, and we have a theme every week, and we asked the coaches to nominate and referees to nominate the player. So this kid uh, got up there, little guy, about, about this tall, even though he was like nine or ten. <laughs> okay, and the coach said, not the biggest, not the fastest, not the strongest, but he had great effort today. He was a really good teammate, and all these things that made him the most valuable person. And he stood up. What was great is when we gave him his award. Part of our speech to him was, guess what else does it, you don't have to be the biggest, strongest, or fastest to do when you go home tonight? Do the laundry, be respectful to your parents, help with the dishes, take out the garbage, be a good person. All the things that you can do on the, off the field. And parents love that. That's what we're here to talk to you all about, is how you can get more youth, more engaged, with more community involvement, similar to what you all do here at Rotary Our Mission Alliance. And uh, with that, I'll turn over to Jeff to talk about some of our opportunities. <coughs> Thank you, Scott. So as Scott mentioned, we, we focus on this MVP zone at all of our sites, along with our NFL flag partnership, we talk about characters, values, respect, honor, and effort. Everything we do from the first time the kids come to the field, we have their parents come out to the 50-yard line, we have a conversation, is we let them know that this is going to be very different than any other youth sporting experience that you've had. We come from the football where kids get cut from making the program, where the intensity level is very high, and we have seen that we have become exclusive in that process, not inclusive. So how do you make a difference in a community, just like the Rotarians do? My mother's a Rotarian down in San Diego, the Rancho Bernardo division. And she talks to me all the time. The highlights of her week is how she went out and did something. So how do you instill that in youth at a very, very young age? Going out only for competition teams, that does satisfy one aspect of your life. But having a safe place to go play, to meet friends as you transition from preschool into kindergarten, kindergarten to middle school, we get the kids out there. We have our volunteer coaches. We have curriculum that we help the coaches and the families with by distributing the weekly theme. So the weekly theme will come through today's about effort. The coaches and the referees all build up from the community because of our program, all try to identify who these kids are. And they get some sort of a prize, award, gift card, t-shirt, something like that. And what's most interesting is the feedback that we get from the parents and the grandparents in the program is that we love what you're doing. And the doing has nothing to do with the playing of the game. We don't keep score. So there's nobody arguing and yelling in the car on the way home. We compete and we teach them that the process gets you to the goal. So if you have a foundation where you come out to Livermore High School, and if any of you are around on Friday night, you know, 5, 30, 6 o'clock would be the, the prime time to stop in before you go grab dinner or something downtown. You'll see at that time, kindergarten through third graders out there, 50% of them have never played a team sport before. We don't know how we're attracting them other than word of mouth and using the school distribution system for email flyers, which is reasonably inefficient, but we have parents that come up and try to grab a whole team to come out. Here's why. When you walk out there, you've got Coach Terry Butler, who's a new coach at Livermore High School this year uh, in terms of head coach. He has made the field available to us at a lower cost along with his athletic director so that the most expensive aspect of our, of our day is taken out of, the, out of the equation. We have expensive costs for providing uh, wonderful NFL jerseys. We brought Broncos and the Seahawks because we wouldn't have a 49ers and uh, Raiders fight here. <laughs> that provides wonderful, um, you know, reversible jerseys that the kids wear. They're authentic. It's cool for them. And then what you see is you see volunteer youth student athletes from Livermore High School out there wearing our referee shirts and our coach shirts. And what they're doing is they're involving themselves with the community. They're mentoring the kids. They're providing service and leadership and they're building for your community in the future because those kids who come out there, if they learn a little bit of football from us, that's fantastic and that's a bonus. But if they're engaged with other friends, they want to come to a game on Friday night, that's a safe place for them to go with their family for some entertainment and the admission and the snack shack supports the school. So it's a fully integrated community program where we like to partner with people. So what we do with our MVP zone and other opportunities is, number one, we, we have to work to go out and generate scholarship money ourselves to fund our scholarships.
because we don't charge enough to truly cover all of our costs. And that's the one way we want to remain competitive, by providing an over-the-top service level to the kids and their families for the experience, but at a price point that anybody can afford. At our MVP zone, for example, Scott mentioned Grocery Outlet. Um, one of the coaches of Livermore, Coach Mike, owns the Grocery Outlet of Livermore. Some of you may shop there and know him. And he'll come out and on a Friday night, he'll sponsor our MVP zone. Instead of two or three or five athletes getting something, he'll bring some healthy food or snack from the store. We'll throw his banner up and everybody gets that, that award that night. And so it's a great way to get involved at a small level as a business owner or as an individual in the community. And then, of course, we need assistance with our scholarship fund because a 22% request rate for a youth sports program is, is pretty staggering. And that's happening because if someone calls me and says, Jeff, we'd like to be a part of your program, I can't afford this. If it's $99 or $140, they say I can't afford it. Most youth sports, and you may not know this, will require you to literally fill out an application and state your need. Our conversation goes like this. What can you afford? $25, fantastic. You do me a favor. Do you have three other friends that you know that would never sign up for this because they can't afford it? Bring them out to try it on Friday night. We'll figure out a way to make it happen. How can I volunteer, Jeff? What can I do to help out? Can I help with the field? The response rate from these families who have never had this happen at a new sports event before, it's, it's enlightening. And they tell their friends, and that's why our scholarship the percentage is growing, because we're bringing people in who can't afford to play. But you come out there on Friday night, you see the kids running around. They are tired. It's 105 degrees out there. They're wearing these jerseys. They're having a great time. They leave energized. They get, they, they get told to come back and share an experience the following week about leadership. And I'll, I'll close with this. Um, our group up in Concord, which is our first program we've had up there uh, this year, the, the coach up there asked the kids to please, I think the word was uh, community. It happened to be the theme of the week. Unbeknownst to Scott and myself, our, our leader up there asked the kids to have their parents send in an example of something that their kids did. Shocking that we even got emails back, because normally we ask an email question, we don't get any responses. You know how that is with surveys. The kids are sending back photos of my son, who's five years old, decided he's going to start picking up garbage at the local Safeway parking lot when we were there. And we took pictures of him throwing it in the dumpster. Another one decided to do a shoe drive that week for whatever reason. These are the kind of things that we're building around youth sports, and we're so excited that we can blend the whole community service and scholarship aspect into athleticism, health, and fitness. And, and we, we're just looking for partnerships from the community to help us continue to grow and invite these families in. With that, I'll say, uh, do you have your raffle or something? I'm just going to leave you all with two shirts that you all can give away. Whoever. It's not a one-size-fits-all, though. Yeah, so you may have to give us away at Christmas. I understand. <laughs> we may have not have given the most dynamic or visually appealing presentation, but you can tell we just weren't ready to commit to the video. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks. So, so thank you for the opportunity to, to speak with you. And the questions? Um, what's the age group that you kind of... Uh, Five-ish to through high school. Okay. Yep. Kindergarten and we try to go by age. Boys and girls. Boys Absolutely. and girls. Co-ed is a very big part of what we do. Like I said, this dance program right here in Livermore has provided a lot of girls. We have a girls soccer team that comes over as an entire club together. And they didn't. When we first said, "Oh, what? How many boys do you want integrated into your team?" They looked at us like we were crazy. <laughs> well, not. How are we going to crush these boys as girls team if we have a boy on our team? Very good. And they did. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes, sir. How long is your season last when you're playing here at Livermore High School? Great, great point. So at Livermore High School, we're running two programs. Our summer program is a six-week program in the summer, primarily from uh, the end of May, June-ish, uh, till next week in July, last week of July. And then in the fall or winter, we'll go start up probably at the end of January and run for eight to ten weeks, depending on field allocation. You work with 200 students, you say? Right now, there are more 200. We have capacity to go to 500, so we appreciate all the uh, all the outreach we can get. Uh, we we outreach out to the schools. We actually have a we didn't talk about this a community give back program. So from any any organization or any school PTA PTO as they call it now, right? Parent teacher organizations. A, a, a kid is referred from. We actually give a donation, a dollar amount back to that particular organization. So there's been schools where we've walked in with checks for 120 dollars. Uh, organizations, really, we've given them checks for $1,200 back to the other organization. 
to market for us. To, to market because we're trying to, again, support each other. We're not trying to grab that piece of the pie. We're just trying to make the pie bigger for all of us. Well, well, thank you again. Just want to leave the last note. We're here in Livermore. We're here to help kids get their activity, and we'd love for uh, you know local businesses to be involved and uh, get the word out for us. Thank you. Yeah.